Hi there and welcome to this tutorial. This video is part of a series, so in case you missed the previous videos, make sure you click here so that you can start with the first one. Otherwise, just continue. The next kind of request we can have a look as with the put. And again, we're gonna use the put endpoint here. And previously, you remember we used raw to paste JavaScript, to use basically a JavaScript object that we posted. Now we use this um, form data and this is like basically in the websites world the equivalent of posting a form and getting some fields so for example this form has a username John Doe you can put here email and say john at example.com hit the send button and you will get something like this again this is not something very special and we probably already seen the most important things here. But as I previously said, one of the basic tests is to just to test, is to just to test the status 200 to see if this responded properly. Um, and again, there are some other things that you may want to check. One of the things that you can do is to check, for example, the response header. And there is a template for that. You can use response headers, content type, check, header, check. And now you're checking if there's a content type. And now see, oh, content type is present, great. Any other headers you can see here, you can test. If I make a content type foo header, this will not exist. And another thing that you may want to look into is to check that this content type really has the proper value. And the way you write it is a bit different. And again, we're gonna go with a pm.expect. And we're gonna say pm.response.headers get. And we are gonna get a header name. There are too many here. Very good. So we are getting this header. And expecting this to equal application JSON. So now we asserted that a certain header is there. Again, let's make sure that this fails and indeed this fails. So this is one of the things, one of the other things that you can check. And in the response, there are a lot of information that you can check. So Postman allows you to see like you have seen you can check the status, you can check the response time and there's a snippet for that or the size of the response. You have access to the headers, you have access to the response body and you can start really writing assertions on them. Last but not least, there's the delete request um, just using the, del the delete method here. Probably if you're working with delete requests, all you have to do is just check the status code and maybe call the resource that you may be deleted or something like that to see if it's working, but there's absolutely nothing special about it. So just a little recap. Um, we used here different kind of requests to basically as exemplify different kind of situations. As I said, status code 100 is one of the easiest just to check if the response matches. If of course it's a status 200, it can be another status and that's also totally fine. Then very importantly, you first need to parse the response body in order to make any assertions on it. And once you have done that, you can start writing tests. And there are a couple of these special situations where you don't have pm.expect, but in most scenarios, you will work with pm.expect, put in what came from the response and checking it against something that you know. And in this case, we dealt with some nested objects. 
and I explain you how you can navigate to those specific properties and how you can basically literally connect the dots between different objects and get that information. Then going to a post request, I've showed you here how you can take a bit advantage of variables and in the pre-request script we defined a global variable card called current date which always posts the current timestamp and we use that in the request body to generate some random generate some changing data and then we also had to look on how we can make that assertion work so this is what we introduced here and the second thing that we introduced is this data structured in javascript called an array and we had a basic assertion on that array of course array and object generally tend to get even more complicated it really depends from scenario to scenario but this generally should be enough to deal with most common situations on that then in the put request again there was nothing special here but we decided to have a look on working with the headers so we had status we had body and now we are working on headers and first we check that we have a specific header and then we wanted to really check if that header had the specific content type that we were looking for. I totally invite you that you play a bit more with http.org. You will find here other endpoints and this will really help you get a better understanding on how Postman is interacting, how you can get this data, write some assertions on your, on your own practice, practice, practice. And then when you feel confident that you understand everything that I've shown you in this tutorial, then go back to your own API and start writing tests for the things that you need. But it's very important that you understand the basics. If you're just starting with uh, programming and you do not have any JavaScript or programming know-how, I would highly recommend that you look for an ES6 JavaScript course to at least to get the basics, to get a better understanding on what's going on and how the code is actually working. I tried all my best in the limited time to explain you everything. And again, for everything I'll explain here, you'll find links in the description, so make sure you check them out. Congratulations on completing this series. I think you have done a great job and learned a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. It really helps a lot to see that you guys there are active and giving me feedback on what are you learning from my tutorials and what else you would like to see as well. So make sure you post your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below. Let me know what you're using Postman for, if you had any problems during this tutorial series and anything else you would like to learn. Subscribe to this channel for more tutorials on Postman, testing, continuous integration and much, much more. Now in this series, we basically just scratch the surface when it comes to Postman tests. There's so much more to learn, like variables, workflows, how to get more advanced with scripts, pre-request scripts. Even in testing, there are, there are still a lot of things that you can explore. And because there's so much to learn on Postman, I created an online course that really takes you baby steps from like building your first request to Postman to going to working with variables, working with workflows, dealing with continuous integration and much, much more. So if you're interested in a course that really takes you step by step into the Postman learning process, then make sure you check out the link. Otherwise, just subscribe to this channel for more videos on Postman. You can continue learning Postman right now by viewing this next video.